Welcome to the Eventuri Intake Development Series for the C8 Corvette. This is the first Corvette that we're making an intake for, and it's also the first Corvette where the engine is in the back. So let's spin the car around and take a closer look at the engine. We've turned the Corvette around, obviously to get access to the engine bay. Let's open the trunk and have a look at what we're working with. Right, clearly you can see the engine, however, the intake itself is hidden behind this panel. I have removed the carpet already for easier access, so let's remove this panel to show you the stock airbox. There we have it. This is the C8 Corvette stock airbox system. It's quite shallow from first impressions because of that panel, which leaves you room in the trunk for obviously the roof when it's taken off and maybe a set of golf clubs. But um, yeah, first impression is very shallow. It's very right angled in terms of its flow. We've got your engine in the middle, obviously, with your flow coming through the center of the airbox and then splitting off two sides to these side vents. The cooler is taken in from the sides. I have had a look, there isn't actually a direct channel to those uh, ducts but there is ambient air in those, in those areas. So it's got a good cold air feed, pulling in from both sides to the middle of the airbox and then through a large filter inside the center of the airbox to the MAF tube and then to the throttle body. So that's a very brief overview of the airbox as it is installed in the car. Let's remove the airbox, I'll take it apart and we can look at the pros and cons of the design. So this is the stock airbox removed from the car. As you've seen from the car, the airbox feeds from both sides and that's from the side vents of the body. Uh, the airflow goes into the middle of the airbox. We'll remove the cover in a moment to show you the filter and then it comes through the MAF tube. I'm going to just remove the side ducts. So you've got side duct on one end with a flexible hose and this flexible hose, you've got another on this side, that's to allow the airbox to move with the engine because the airbox is actually fixed to the engine and chassis bracing and as the engine turns and moves this whole airbox moves with the engine so these are important to allow some movement on both sides and obviously these come apart right turn the airbox over now you can see how the airflow moves from the filter of the airbox through the MAF tube and into the rubber hose which connects directly to the throttle body of the engine. The MAF sensor is in this square slot and you can see a very sharp 90 degree bend between the opening in the airbox and the MAF tube itself. I'll remove this as well. So obviously that's your final connection with the breather port on one side for the breather research system. Okay, let's take the lid of the airbox off and show the inside. With the lid off, we can see this filter. It's a cylindrical type of filter. Not a huge amount of surface area as I was expecting, but obviously the airbox being shallow, that's, that's to be expected. Nice amount of space around the filter, which is good. So as you can see, airflow comes in from these two side openings. Um, then it's allowed to move around the filter and it's sucked through the filter and finally into the MAF tube through the MAF section right in the center. Looking at the airbox itself, I can straight away see a couple of points of contention. Namely, with these openings here, there's a very sharp edge on both sides and that's not great for flow because as the airflow comes through that opening, with that being a very sharp edge, you're gonna have some disconnection of flow between the surfaces. Um, and then the other thing is that obviously you've got flow coming in from both sides and having to turn 90 degrees 
into that center uh, MAF tube area and there is no gradual change of uh, geometry or angle there. It's literally 90 degrees and then down. There is a bit of a um, fillet here. So you've got a bit of a, like a velocity stack helping that transition, but it's not big compared to the angle the airflow is having to change. The back of the filter itself, this is the face which connects to the base of the airbox. There is a divider in the middle and obviously they've done that to try and help the two channels uh, not to have turbulence in the middle as they converge and move into that MAF tube area. That in itself does create other problems. Obviously, it's going to create a slight restriction as well with the airflow having to then hit that wall and then moving down. There is no, there is no slope, there's no fillet or nice curves in the middle there to help the airflow change direction. So it's literally hitting off that and coming down. So there are a few points that we can improve straight away. We looked at the stock airbox, we've looked at the drawbacks of the design, and it's very clear that the airbox has been made on purpose to be shallow to allow more space in the trunk for luggage. So now what we need to do is 3D scan the area to give us an idea of what we have to work with to make some improvements. So I'm now gonna scan the car, then we'll head to the office and look at the scans and start with the design. With the 3D scanning complete, I've got the scan data in front of me, so I'm gonna build up the layers and explain what they are. So right now I've just got the actual area where the stock airbox sits. So this area here is the gearbox itself, and you've got the two cats on each side. We've got the stock inlet coupler, which goes onto the throttle body and then just around it, we've got the, the bracing on both sides. The stock gearbox mounts to the attachment points on the gearbox, so I'll show you those two holes, so that one there, and on the other side, right there. And then it also attaches on those two mounts, so that round mount on this side, and then the round mount just there. Okay. The cold air feeds for the airbox are on the sides, which I haven't shown yet, so let me bring them up. Okay, so the gold coloured scans are the openings where the airbox pulls cold air in from, and that goes down to the side vents of the car. And then finally, we can look at the panel which closes the airbox. Okay, so that's the panel where the stock airbox sits behind. Um, obviously it's open right now because we've removed that central panel and but you can sort of get an idea of the envelope available. Now the final piece of this scan was the stock rear cover and that's loaded in that copper colour now. So this is a complete scan. You can see how small that area is between the copper coloured rear panel all the way to this silicon coupler, the stock silicon coupler, and the airbox therefore is quite shallow in design, the stock airbox at least. If I do a cross section, you may be able to get a better idea. All right, so this cross section shows you, if I bring it forward to the coupler, right there. Okay, so you can see the, the coupler, where it ends, and then the actual closing panel on this side. So there's not a lot of distance between those two points, which gives us a challenge because we're trying to make the flow path as smooth as possible, and you've got a very sharp geometry change between where the airbox has to pull in cold air from the side vents 
and then you've got a 90 degree turn to the coupler. So that is a challenge and something we're going to have to, to work with. And I'll show you what we've done to fix or to solve the issue of such a small depth of geometry and improving that to get a more gradual change of direction from the side inlets to the throttle body. After a lot of design work and flow optimization, we've come to a solution. I'm going to discuss with you now the design, the components, why we've made them that way, and also the changes we've had to make with even the panelling. So let's have a look at this overall design. It's clearly very different to the stock gearbox, which was cuboid in nature, had a lot of sharp angles with it. And the reason for that is purely down to trying to make the flow as smooth and linear as possible as it negotiates from the side inlets and then around 90 degrees to the throttle body. So if we look at where the throttle body is, so we've got now our own silicon coupler, which is a lot shorter in length compared to the stock rubber coupler, and that allows us to have a bit more length going forward through the MAF section to try and keep the flow developed and smooth as it goes through the MAF to keep the fuel trims as close as possible to stock. So we've got our MAF section right there as it goes through the MAF sensor. Then you've got the flow coming into that section from these two housings on both sides. And you can see a nice gradual swooping curve on both sides as those housings merge to the center. So it's a very organic shape and it's actually very similar in shape to our Porsche uh, GT3 RS intake system which has a similar layout because the Porsche also breathes from both sides of the car and collects to the center feeding the throttle body. Within those two housings are our reverse mounted filters. So this is our patented Venturi housing system. And then on the other side of the housings, these two are the ducts, which seal to the housings and the mouths of those filters. Those ducts connect to our custom silicon, or sorry, EPDM flexible hoses, which is these. And those hoses connect to our custom flanges, which I'll show you in a moment, which secure to the side vents where the cold air is fed to the stock airbox as well. So everything is sealed, nothing is open. We are avoiding pulling any heated air from the engine bay into the system. And we're using that really good stock side vent air intake system. All right, let's have a look at the shape, overall shape. Now, one thing you may notice is how it protrudes from that rear panel. Now the stock airbox sits a lot deeper in because you've got that rear panel covering the stock airbox. If I bring that stock panel back up now, there you go, you can see that it just doesn't fit. Our intake sticks through that panel and that's because we've made it as large as possible for two reasons. Higher volumetric efficiency and also to allow us to have smoother, more gradual curvature from the side to the middle where it feeds the throttle body. That was very important to us. If we stayed within the constraints of that stock panel, the geometry just wouldn't be smooth enough to give us the maximum effect of linear flow and also reduction of drag. So we've disregarded that rear panel and the constraints of the rear panel and we've made it much larger in volume, allowing us for a smoother flow path. Obviously, you need to close that rear panel because you don't want all that heat coming into the trunk area. So what we've done, which is an added bonus to the system since the intake is carbon fiber, we have redesigned that rear panel and made it out of a clear polycarbonate material, which allows the intake to be shown and showcased when you open the trunk. So you can see that carbon fiber at any time. It's not hidden away. If I hide that panel and show you our new panel, Okay, that's the shape of the new panel. It's clear, I've just made it in grey so you can see the curvature of it. 
it isn't flat like the stock one, it follows the curves of our intake, so it has a much nicer form. If I just make that clear, you'll get an idea of what it may look like in person. Okay, I've made it translucent. I'll just remove the lines. Okay, so you get an idea now of what visually it may look like once in the car. So you've got this see-through polycarbonate rear panel, which has the same form factor as the intake, and then you've got the carbon fiber intake behind it feeding the engine. So that's the visual details of the intake and how it fits in the car. I'm going to remove the scan data now and show you the actual design in more detail. There's the intake by itself, you can see it much more clearly. We've got also this mesh of bracket work which holds everything in place. This mesh at the back, or well, lattice I should say, is laser cut and it holds all the looms in place. There's a lot of wiring and cables which go on behind that airbox, so that is a neat solution to keep everything nice and tidy. It also has our plaque with the individual serial numbers for the intake. Okay, the intake itself. Let's remove this. Now you can see it more clearly. We've got our side flanges there, so these were the parts which uh, fasten on to the stock locations where the cold air feed is on both sides. These are custom made. They're a lot shorter than the stock ones to allow us to use uh, the length to open up the volume much quicker um, so we avoid having to be restricted to that small size for longer. Those are the flanges. What I'll do now is create a cross section across the system so you can see how it works. I've created a cross section through the middle of the intake. Right, you can see very clearly now. You've got your flow coming in from both sides. So the flanges going to the flexible hoses which allow the whole intake to move with the engine. Then you've got the two ducts on both sides where the air comes into. That then feeds the mouths of the two filters. Now you notice the filters are arranged in a reverse fashion and that's our uh, patented Venturi design. So what happens is the airflow comes into these two filters from the large diameter where the mouths are. The airflow negotiates its way through the mesh and then is shaped nice and smoothly by the housing on both sides. These cones you can see on the inside are custom made and developed to allow the flow to, as it comes around the filter, to pull itself in so it doesn't leave a large uh, wake of turbulence behind that cone. So those cones actually allow the flow to come in, pull into the middle, and then it has a nice uh, gradual shape towards the center. The flow then merges in the middle and we've got this nice gradual curvature through this middle section and up into this nice long MAF tube section. That's quite a, a good size MAF tube section there to allow the flow to develop, gather and sort itself out to be nice and smooth as it goes through the sensor. Because the last thing we want is for the flow to be turbulent or circulating as it's going through that sensor that will cause issues with the fuel trim and it may even cause the engine to throw a check engine light. So we've made sure that the flow is developed and nice and linear as it goes through that sensor. And then finally, it goes through the silicon, which you may notice there is stepped. So we've got a, a step on this side and there's also a step on the other side. You can see the thickness of that carbon mates up against the internal step, which keeps the internal walls nice and smooth. There's no exposed wall thickness or edging for the flow to trip and hit onto. That's more prominent on the throttle body side because that's the thickness of the throttle body. And once the silicon goes onto the throttle body, it sits flush with the internal wall. So you've got a nice smooth path all the way through. Now that the design's done, it's important to run a CFD simulation to do a thorough check on how the flow is behaving through the intake. 
our CFD simulation is set up to mimic the real world conditions. So we have a boundary condition where it's pulling air through the intake rather than pushing air into it because obviously in the engine, engine is pulling air through the intake system. So that's what we've done in our setup. Looking at the results themselves, you can see streamlines of how the air is flowing and the colors depict the velocity. So blue is low velocity and then green, yellow, orange to red is higher velocities. You can see on the map here, which is a cross section of the intake, that the streamlines are nice and straight going into the system from both entries on each side. You do have a little bit of turbulence in the middle of each filter, but that's pre-filtration, which is fine. The air is then moving through both filters. And then if you look at the center of the system and then through to the MAF tube and silicon up to the throttle body, it's nice and straight. And there is no circulation, no turbulence through that middle section of the intake, especially with the MAF tube and the silicon is. And in fact, the velocity is increasing as you go up through into the engine, which is excellent because it's showing that the intake is working very efficiently and it's pulling through nice and straight. You got laminar flow through the middle section of that, of that intake. You can see the, the actual flow lines moving through the filtration on each side and it's progressing nicely through those gentle curves as it merges with the section in the middle and then up through the MAF tube. An important thing to notice is that although there's some turbulence pre-filter, as the flow moves its way through the filtration material, it actually straightens out and becomes laminar. And that's a key feature of our reverse mounted intake design, where the filters are specifically designed to straighten out any turbulent flow. Removing the filters would actually create more turbulence throughout that entire intake, which would make the job of the mass sensor much harder. It would upset the fuel trims and the engine would have a harder time pulling the air through because it's much more unsteady. And that's actually true for any filter in any airbox. If you remove a filter, you're going to introduce more turbulence throughout more of that intake area. That flow straightening characteristic that filters have on turbulent air is something I wanted to build on when designing our filters specifically for our patented Venturi housings. So we added flow cones and adjusted the, the angle of the actual mesh to make sure that when turbulent flow moves through our filters, that flow is straightened out and becomes laminar as fast as possible. So you can see that in our safety analysis, it's very laminar as soon as it exits the filters. With those two flow cones in the middle of the, of the filters, the flow is actually allowed to smoothly transverse from that geometry and it allows the flow to become laminar without a long wake of uh, stagnant air being left behind the filters, which is what those flow cones are doing. That's something that we've designed, it's specific to our filters, and it allows the flow to be laminar much quicker. And you can see in the vast majority of the flow within the middle of that intake and around the outsides of the filters themselves, post filtration media, it's very straight and it's very laminar. Furthermore, we do use a similar size filter in our Audi RS3 system, and that intake is being used in cars well in excess of a thousand horsepower, running eight second quarter miles. So by using two of those filters in the Corvette intake, we're very confident that the filter itself poses no restriction to the flow. With the 3D modeling done and the CFD analysis finished, it's now important to move forward to 3D printing and actual physical prototypes. So let's go downstairs, have a look at the 3D printed versions of this intake. We'll compare them to the stock airbox, fit them, and then we can move forward with further testing. So here's our intake in its 3D printed prototype form. We've got the central intake itself, duct on one side with our EPDM flexible hose, and then our plastic duct entry port on that side. On the other side, we haven't put the duct in place, just to show you the filter itself, which goes inside the housing. Um, the filter has its uh, entry cowl and then the same EPDM and duct on the left side. As I showed you upstairs, this is a radical redesign in comparison to the stock airbox, and I'll show you why. First of all, 
as we showed previously for the stock airbox, airflow has to come in from the sides, do a 90 degree turn and straight out through the MAF tube with a very small kind of velocity stack on the inside of that airbox to guide the air through that filter and through this MAF tube. But it's very, very sharp in terms of its geometry change. On our system, you've got your airflow coming in from the ducts, going into the conical filters, which are inside this housing, which are also reverse mounted. And then you've got both housings, which converge very smoothly into the center math section. So the housings are actually helping the airflow to converge and move through the central, central math tube much more gradually and much more smoothly than it is on the stock airbox. And one of the ways we've been able to do that, as I explained earlier, is we've used much more area in the trunk. So this intake sits out further than the stock airbox, which allows us to do this gradual swooping change of geometry from both sides collecting into the stock, the MAF, sorry, the MAF tube. The dramatic redesign of our intake allowed us to move away from this restrictive filtration system and go towards our patented Venturi style cone filters and housings. So we're now using two conical type filters and for those of you who aren't familiar with our brand and what we do, we have a patent on a Venturi housing system where we effectively flip these cone filters around. So in a conventional sense, you'd have cone filters with airflow coming in this direction, going through this side of the filter, out from this side and into the MAF section. What we do is we flip that around. So now airflow goes into the mouth of the filter, which is a larger, larger diameter, comes out from this side, which converges down to a point. And where this mounts into our Venturi housings, the housings themselves shape the flow down into a much smoother way and a much more laminar way to the MAF or to the engine. So using our patented Venturi housings, we've been able to use this configuration with two filters and allow for the flow to be a lot smoother as compared to the stock system where they've had to use a dividing plate and it has a lot of 90 degree bends with a lot of sharp edges, which introduces turbulence and drag. So with the filters explained, I'm sure most of you are looking forward to seeing what the prototype looks like installed in the car itself. So I'm now gonna go ahead and install the prototype and let's have a look. So that's the prototype installed. As you can see, it looks much more organic in shape and that's purely a result of the flow optimization. So the way we've designed it for flow to be optimum and smooth has led to the shape being much more smooth, much more organically oriented. So as you can see, we've got the, the duct which feeds in from the side entry. This moves into this large centerpiece which merges together nice and smoothly to the center math section, to the engine. I've left the left side duct off just to illustrate the shape of the intake and, and the prototype nature of what we're doing. I've also left off a couple of brackets. So on this side, you can see there's a, an opening here that's for a bracket to seal the duct to the housing. The other thing to notice is that this intake sits much further out as compared to the stock airbox. The stock airbox kind of finished around this area here, and then you had that panel to seal it off. Our intake sits out much further to give us that room to make it smoother for airflow. I do hope you've enjoyed this first video. Do join us for the second video, where we'll be showing you the actual carbon fiber intake, and we'll go through all the performance data with flow bench testing and the dyno figures. Mm -hmm.